God's people. Now listen to me. God's people. I'm not talking about the unsaved. I'm not talking about the ungodly. I'm not talking about the unrighteous. I'm talking about God's people this morning. Oftentimes, and in many cases, the people of God can find themselves deep down, deep down in the dumps of deep despair. So far down the child of God, listen to me, sometimes the child of God can get so far down, they think that there's no way up. You see, child of God, sometimes God's people can get so far down that at times, they not only believe that the world is against them, but sometimes they almost believe that God is against them. Do you know something this morning, child of God? There's so many of God's people who hurt today. And I mean really hurt. And are really down. And not only do some of them people believe this morning that the world's against them, sometimes they even believe that God has forgotten them and God has forsaken them. You read through your Bible this morning, child of God, and you'll find and you'll read many great men of God often believed that there was times that God even forgot about them. And God had even forsaken them. And I wonder, am I touching a nerve here this morning? Sorry, is God touching a heart because you find yourself this morning perhaps at the end of your tether? You feel like throwing in the towel. You feel like giving up. You just feel this morning, child of God, there's no point in going on. Remember what the psalmist in Psalm 13 verse 1 said. He says, How long? Wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? And sometimes, child of God, we do believe and we do think and we're tempted to believe that God has forgotten us. We're so far down in the dumps of deep despair. You know, sometimes, child of God, this all comes about because Life doesn't just turn out the way we planned it. Life just hadn't or hasn't turned out the way we would have expected it. And sometimes that may work through our children. Maybe I'm speaking to a, 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 a Christian parents this morning. Listen to me. Your children... Our children this morning hasn't turned out the way we would wanted them to turn out. They didn't turn out the way we expected them to. And you've done everything that you had in your power to bring them up in a Bible-believing church, but they didn't turn out the way they expected to turn out. And sometimes, child of God, that can drive us into the depths of deep despair. And you feel a failure this morning as a parent because your kids didn't turn out the way it is. Listen, a wee word of advice for you. Never stop loving them and never stop praying, them, praying for them. Do you hear me? If your kids are as far as away as the devil and sin can take them, never you stop praying for them and don't you ever stop loving them. Never. Maybe it's the career. Maybe we thought we had the perfect career this morning, and, and boys of oh boys, this is for me, and this is definitely for me. But lo and behold, it wasn't what we thought, or it wasn't what we expected this morning. And it just seems this morning, everything is just out of control. Maybe it's our calling this morning. Oh, I, our calling into God's service can be the very same. We thought this is definitely the calling of God. This is definitely sure. And then when it doesn't work out and things fail, we get angry. And sometimes we get angry with others. 
And we get angry with God because it has worked for others and it hasn't worked and, and, and it just seems to drive us deeper and deeper into the depths of despair. Sometimes, child of God, this morning when things seem so perfect for others, and, or sorry, perfect for us, but it, it doesn't work out the way it works out, then it's, it's just total disaster. You know, sometimes we think this morning we believe this and that and the other's perfect for us. But you know something, child of God, God has other plans. I remember one time Tracy and I were out shopping one day, and I'll tell you it's a job I don't like doing. And we went out shopping one day, and we arrived at that place in Lisbon, or what do you call it, Saint Sprucefield, Marks and Spencers. And we're walking around the floor, and she's and she seen this suit dressed on the floor shop, you know the shop dummy, she's seen this suit. She says, George, you look perfect in one of them, that suit. And I wasn't in the mood. And you know what it's like, men, don't you? You know what it's like? I watch other men, and they're walking about like sheep having no shepherd like myself. <laughs> she says, George, that suit would really suit you. Go and try it on. I says, I can't be, I can't be bothered today. It's a whole handling, isn't it? And she says, well, cappuccino on a scone. Oh, she knows how to get around me, all right. And I went and put this suit on and the shirt and the tie and all had to go on and everything had to happen and had to even put the shoes on. And I come out after all that handling. And I knew beer by the lip. No, she says, no. <laughs> she says, she says it looked better on the dummy. <laughs> I things, child of God, just doesn't end up in the way that we would think. You know, the Apostle Paul this morning, there was painful times in his life. You see, there's a false gospel being preached today that tell you nowadays, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never worry. You'll never be sick. You'll never have problems. Heaven in the beds, Rosie. Well, I don't know about you. That must be a false gospel with me because I'm sure you're like me. You never knew what trouble was until you got saved. Would I break in saying that? Of course I would. But there are three things in the portion of God's Word that we have read this morning that God wants to show us. First and foremost, God wants to show us this morning the intense pressures of Paul's problems. The intense Problems of Paul's problems. Maybe there's someone here this morning, and listen, you believe this morning life has dealt you an unfair hand. And you're broken because of it. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people broken today. Broken in heart. Broken in mind. And maybe I'm speaking just to someone here this morning. This, is message, this message is for you. The intense pressures of Paul's problems. Look at verse 8 just with me for, for, for a very few moments. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Despaired even of life. Do you know something this morning, child of God? You can get so far down that you can even despair yourselves even of life. Do you know something, child of God? You can get so far down this morning that it's not death that scares you. It's life. Life can scare you. Paul could say this morning, listen to it. He says in, in verse 8, we despaired even of life. Friend, I tell you something now, child of God, listen to me. Times can come into our lives when problems are so intense that the very last ounce of faith can be squeezed out of us. And let me say something, child of God, it's a very lonely and it's a very dark place to be. The 
The psalmist could say in Psalm 88, verse 3, My soul is full of troubles. Psalm 88 and verse 1, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried to thee day and night. Tell me, does it ring a bell this morning? Does that sound familiar? When you're down in the dumps of deep despair, I can tell you it can be a lonely place. It's a place of weeping. It's a place of brokenness. It's a, te- a place of tears. And troubles and trials are at every hand. And life doesn't seem worth living. Psalmist could say in Psalm 42, verse 3, My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? You know, my, my late father's cousin experienced that, you know. You called him George Webb. And George Webb was a soundly saved Methodist. There was he and his wife and his mother and father. They were all four godly people, and they were traveling up the M1 one night. And two nurses that had just come home from France, and they took the long turn in the motorway, and they came down the wrong motorway, and they crashed clean into George and the family. Two nurses were killed. George's wife was killed. His mother and father were killed. He was the only survivor. The only survivor. He was in hospital for six months. And his wife and his mother and his father were all buried that he wasn't even at their funeral. And George Webb often said, I was so low. I was so deep down. I even despaired of life, he said. And I felt that life wasn't worth living and that my life had come to an end. I'm telling you, child of God, the law of the earthly life is this this morning. Man's born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. And sometimes, child of God, our faith this morning can be stretched till it almost snaps. And our faith this morning can be built till it almost breaks. I went into hospital to see a a man not so very, well, a a wee while ago now. He's in a psychiatric hospital. A saved man. A saved man. And I got down beside him. And as I listened to what happened, I didn't even know how far down he was. As I listened to this man, you know, this man began to share with me how he felt. And he says, George, I have everything in life materially. He says, but there came the moment I couldn't live life anymore. He went down to the bedroom and got the shotgun out. He put the cartridges in, had her cocked and all. And the next thing he heard, the back door slamming and his wife appeared in the living room, or the bedroom. And he told me, if she hadn't been here, if she hadn't had her come in, I wouldn't have been here the day. He says you can get that low. But he says, I was never as glad of the wife coming in. Now listen, child of God. 
the problems of life can be intense. And we all can find ourselves down in the dumps of deep despair. And there can come that moment in life when you think even God has forgotten and forsaken you. Well, do you want to know something, child of God? Maybe this is what you need to hear. Listen, God forgets none of His children. God is not unrighteous that He should forget. Do you want to know something else, child of God? God never forsakes His children. the intense pressures of Paul's problems. Phillips describes verse 8 like this. He puts it into everyday language. He says, At a time we were completely overwhelmed. The burden was more than what we could bear. In fact, we told ourselves, This is the end. Is that all you can see this morning, child of God? We all quote that we verse, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. But I'll tell you, morning's long coming for you. Listen, dear child of God, God knows exactly where you are, and God knows exactly how you feel. The intense pressures of Paul's problems. But then there's the important purpose of God's problems. Because in verse 4, we read these words. Verse 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. The comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. Do you ever ask yourself the question, child of God, why does God not intervene before it goes too far? Why does God not step in before the situation, before the circumstance gets out of hand? We pray for that son. We pray for that daughter. We pray for this person. We pray for this. But why does God seem close to our prayers? Why does God allow godly people to suffer? Why did Joseph, why did God not intervene in Joseph's part and stop him from going into prison? Listen, why did God not intervene on behalf of Daniel to keep him out of the den of lions? Why did God not intervene this morning, child of God, when the three Hebrew princes were to be cast into the fiery furnace? Why did God not intervene? You know, I used to ask myself that question. Why did God not intervene on behalf of Avon Thompson, Pastor Avon Thompson, a man whose ministry was seeing so much blessing, having seen so many souls saved? Why? You know something, child of God? When you study the situation, you know, them people made a great impact to those that were around them during them despairing times. Sometimes, child of God, now you listen to me, sometimes your best moments follow the worst of times. And in a day to come, suffering saint this morning, listen to me. What you're going through, and this morning, child of God, your experiences that seems to be strangling you out of every ounce of faith, could be preparing you for a day to come to draw alongside others that just needs that touch. 
That young man, that man in the hospital that I went to see, this is what he told me. He says, George, when I finally get out of this, and thank God he has, when I get out of this, he says, if there's anybody in your congregation needs help to speak to someone that's really down, he says, I'll speak to them because I've been there. I've been there. Do you know, child of God, when people draw alongside and they try and comfort you and you haven't a clue, they haven't a clue what you're going through, so you know, it's no use, but when somebody comes alongside that who's been there, ah, oh, that's different, isn't it? And the Apostle Paul could say, listen, to the very comfort that we got from God and from the very consolation, we can bring you comfort because we've been there. Now, listen, child of God, that's the important purpose of Paul's problem. Through it all, Paul could draw alongside and comfort those that are suffering. Listen, child of God, it may be in a day to come, God will be needing you, and God will be calling somebody in here in a day to come to draw alongside someone to be a comfort, not a critic. A comfort. There's too many of God's people in their chitter boxes. And they'd rather run such down, get alongside, but to comfort them and to console them and to be there for them and to listen to them. It may be bad today, child of God. It may be better. Oh, the intense pressures of Paul's problems. The important purpose of Paul's problems that he could see that a day to come, what he suffered may, and through his own sufferings, he may bring comfort to those that suffer. Then we come to the last bit, the immediate priority over Paul's problems. Verse 9, we read these words. Verse 9, where it says, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God that raiseth the dead. Ah, you know, child of God, I don't know about you, but I make this mistake. I'm not perfect up here, you know, far from it. And I don't think myself any better than you either. There's one thing I make a mistake on, and sometimes you do the same. When trouble comes and the going gets tough, sometimes we think we can paddle our own canoe, can't we? We think this morning that we can get ourselves out of it. But Paul this morning in verse 9 said this, said these words, we should not trust in ourselves. Child of God this morning, listen to me. No matter how low you are, no matter how deep down you are, trust in God. Trust in God. And you'll find, child of God, Oh, the devil will try and make you believe he's forgotten about you and forsaken you. I'll tell you, you trust in God, child of God. You're not far down, not far down, that God will forget about you. God never forgets or forsakes his children. We often try to control our own situations, don't we? We try and steer ourselves out. And then the next thing what happens, we get all the negative thoughts. Our minds become filled with negativity. Nobody cares. Everybody's against me. I and you get to think God's even against us too. Now listen, friends. Whoever you are this morning, God's not against you. God's for you. God's for you. I know you can't understand the why. Why? There's times I can't understand why. There's times I have to sing that wee hymn to myself. I, I'm not skilled to understand what God hath willed, what God hath planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior, and that's all I need to know. And that's all you need to know, child of God, despairing child of God. Hold you on to the Lord this morning. Don't give up, because God will never give up on you. Joel chapter 3, verse 16, it says there, The Lord is the hope of His children and the strength to His people. 
And Paul this morning, looking back to those times where he felt the intense pressures of his problems, afterwards he could see that there was an important purpose in it all, and he saw he had to take the immediate plan. Forget about depending upon your own strength and forget about leaning on your own understanding of it all and just simply trust in God. Listen, is there someone here this morning and you feel you can't go on? Life is so unbearable. I want you to know, and God has me up here to tell you, God knows all about it. God understands. And God cares. And God doesn't want you to try and understand and ask the reasons why. All God wants you to do this morning is trust Him. Trust Him. For He will see you.